So you're in the market for a new track toy. Maybe you think Japanese 600s are just a little too common. Maybe you think 1000 cc's are just a little bit too much. Well today, we've got two oddball middle displacement Italian super sport motorcycles we're gonna be checking out on track. Stay tuned. So in case you've been living under a rock, this is our giveaway 2020 Ducati Panigale V2. Why am I giving away? Well, if you go on yamanube.co in the link in the description below, you can sign up and join our awesome community, get access to our Discord server, join the wonderful community of all other motorcyclists around the world. We also do weekly contests, all kinds of cool stuff for our members, and we have exclusive videos only for them. Click the link down below and check that out. The Zambia Augusta, however, is a loner bike from the fine folks over at Eurocycle. They've given it to me for a while to play Play with, enjoy, and have fun, and make these videos for you guys. So click the link down below and check out their dealership. They ship all over the nation, so any bike you want, they can probably get it to you if you're in the market for something exclusive and European. I also got the Panigale V2 from them, so pretty cool deal. So first up for today is this Ducati Panigale V2. This is a 955cc, 160 horsepower Italian, sort of super bike, sort of super sport. Um, if you guys seen our first impression ride and our first ride and reveal of this thing, you know that it's more of a street biased motorcycle. You can tell by the way it's set up from the factory. The ergonomics are very comfortable. It's got a very cushy seat and the tires are very amenable for street duty as well. So I'm interested to see how it holds up to track abuse today. One cool thing about the Panigale and other bikes in the current super middleweight category is that it has all the same electronics and features that you'd see on the Big Brother V4. So you got traction control, rider aids, wheelie control, slide control, all kinds of cool stuff, and up and down quick shifter. So this thing is ready to party from the factory. And this of course is our other motorcycle for today. This is a 2020 MV Agusta F3 800 RC. RC stands for Reparto Corse, which means this is a limited edition track specific version of the F3 800. This is number 203 out of 400 units made. So this is a very special and unique motorcycle. It features a 798cc inline triple, so you guys know I'm already going to like it quite a bit. Makes about 150 horsepower, comes with a lot of goodies like this SC Project exhaust, has a single sided swing arm, up and down quick shifter, all kinds of rider modes as well. But compared to the Ducati, this is a thoroughbred track weapon. This thing is designed to live and breathe at the track. But for some reason, MV Agusta put on these very, very street biased Rosso 3s on it. So not really sure why they did that but I digress. The other thing you'll note about this bike too, it has an old school LED instrument cluster and overall just has a bit of an old school aesthetic to it. This bike hasn't been updated since about 2012 or 2013 when the F3 platform came out. So you can see the tail section and the front end look a little bit dated compared to the Ducati, but as we've seen in many other videos, age does not equal performance. And so we're gonna take a look at this thing and see how it's held up. So the question we're trying to answer today is whether or not these motorcycles should be under your consideration as fun track day toys. The main thing we're looking for today is how fun they are on track and how well they hold up after session and sessions of abuse. The most important thing you want out of a track ready motorcycle is the ability to continuously put down laps at a consistent fun pace and just have a good time on your bike. Obviously these are not competition machines. They don't really fit into the 600 or 1000 cc class and so they fall outside of that range. And so today, although we are going to be running a lap timer to see which one I can pull faster laps on. I do want to note that all it is today is just about fun on track. So let's get into it with the MV Agusta. Alrighty guys, going out on track with the MV Agusta F3. So as I mentioned, this bike is on street bias tires. And so what we're going to do is very carefully warm up these tires and get used to this motorcycle. I've only ridden it once on the street before. So let's take it nice and easy here. Yeah, the tip-in is super similar to my race bike. Brakes feel phenomenal. This Nissan Master Cylinder on this thing is insane. Really nice. So again, getting some heat in the tires. The track temperatures right now are actually still kind of cold. It's like just over 70 degrees. Just getting a feel for this bike. The throttle feels actually very BMW to me. A little clinical, a little easy going, you know. I love auto blippers, man. I really wish my race bike had one. Yeah. Really stable mid corner. I like that. Still warming it up. All right, front straight. Yeah. Trail that in. Missed it a little bit. I don't love these tires. Jeez, 
this thing feels good, man. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Still cold. Still a limited edition race bike. Man, the mid-range grunt is awesome. Really awesome, dude. Some novices coming up here. Gonna pass them courteously on the back straight. It really just glides, man. It's got punch. Holy moly, it's got punch. The engine feels so much stronger than my race bike. I think I just needed to wake up a little bit. What an awesome bike. God damn, dude. really well. Alrighty guys, heading out on the Ducati V2 Panigale on track. Now much like the MV street tires, you gotta warm them up, get used to this bike, and let's see how she does. Yeah, so already it's just so much more of a street bike than the MV. Whoa, the brakes aren't even close to being there like on the MV. Holy crap, alright. <laughs> Very twitchy on the side of the tire. The wide step bars it's better than the mv factory for factory but you can you can change that out pretty easily it's got good mid-range grunt i like the way it dives in point and shoot Really good grunt. Good torque. It's got more torque than the MV, that's for sure. The uh, rev ceiling ends a little bit quicker though. Uh, I cut power on me. Interesting. Okay, so definitely prefers third over there. I mean, it's well sorted, don't get me wrong. But it just feels like my Daytona felt when I first got it. Total street bike. Which it is, you know? Damn quick shifters, a lot like the Daytona. Doesn't give me what I want when I want it. Which I hate. Push this bike pretty fucking good though, man. Yeah. Half a third. That feels better. I had about a thousand RPM extra, but I don't. Jeez! Like most 
Dusty Caddies that doesn't love going out to Redline, so I've been keeping it kind of far away from Redline. Keeping it lower gear, using that Ducati Torque to help me out. Let's take this one in fourth, a bit higher speed. Yeah, that feels better. Down two gears here. Auto blipper doing its job, nice and quick. like a street bike for sure. So guys, wrapping up my thoughts here on the MV Agusta F3800RC. What a special bike. It feels really, really good on track. I'm sure as you guys saw in my raw impressions of it. But I wanted to dive a little bit deeper. I had some time here in the pits to think about what I felt on track and here's my final thoughts on it. So number one, it's supremely stable. It's much closer to a track bike than I ever thought any manufacturer could make. This thing seriously feels like about 60 or 70% there to a proper race bike. Um, as many of you guys know, I have a 675R that is race prep for CMRA, and I've done tons of stuff to that bike to get it to a good level and to feel really good on track. This thing is not far off, which is kind of nuts. It likes to lift the front end a little bit. It's a bit of a party animal. It's got tons of mid-range grunts. If you pick up the throttle on it, it definitely tends to lift the front wheel, which is fun. Uh, the brakes are definitely the best factory brakes I've ever felt on any motorcycle. It's got this absolutely enormous Nissan master cylinder, loads of stopping power. Even if it doesn't have the brand spanking new Brembo Stylema calipers, it still feels really, really good. It has way better brakes than the V2, way better brakes than the R1, way better brakes than the 765 Daytona. This thing is awesome. The throttle is very predictable, if a little clinical. This throttle feels exactly like the BMW S1000 RR. Maybe they source the part from the same manufacturer or something, I don't know. But it does feel very, very similar to the S1000 RR. One downside to this machine is the tires feel super limited. Um, these Rosso 3s that it comes equipped with, I don't know why MV did this to this bike. It should definitely come with Super Corsa SPs or something similar. The quick shifter is a down spot for me as well. Uh, on the upshifts, it definitely feels a little wonky. It's not exactly perfect. Um, downshifts feel really, really good, but upshifts just feel a little bit iffy for me. Um, the front end is super rewarding. It's a very fun motorcycle to ride around your favorite track. Um, I do think that it could stand to lose about 20 to 30 pounds. It doesn't feel as nimble as I would like. So if you deleted a bunch of the street stuff, put race fairings on it, maybe put a lightweight battery, you could probably get close to that figure and just have it be a little bit more nimble. But overall, it's an incredibly fun motorcycle to ride and definitely one of the raciest factory motorcycles that I've ever ridden. The only changes I would recommend if you do get this machine are get some tank grips, get some race fairings to lighten it up, uh, get some proper tires, GP shift, and it's basically perfect. I wouldn't even recommend riding this thing on the street. It's not even worth it. All right, guys, so coming off the Ducati after our first impression test on track, thought a little bit more about it in the pits, and here's my final thoughts. Now, the Ducati has a very nimble feeling on the street, which, as I predicted, translates to a bit of a twitchy feeling on track. This thing's super similar to how my 675R felt when I first got it on track and before I started race prepping it. It's very flattering on street, but once you actually get it on the side of the tire, it's just a little twitchy. Uh, the wide set bars feel excellent. That's exactly how I would set up a motorcycle. I love a wide stance on a track bike or a race bike. Um, it tends to get itself into knots a little bit. The corner exit as the bike lifts is a little bit wobbly. It's not as predictable and nice as I would like, but one thing I will say in this bike's favor is that it does like to be ridden aggressively. The Ducati is a bike that responds very, very well to aggressive inputs, which I really appreciated. However, under heavy braking, I did tend to feel a little bit of a squirm, you know, that typical street bike thing that they do, and not in a good way, like on my race bike, when you brake in really hard, you feel the front end just kind of dance a little bit. This one just feels a little bit quicker, a little bit out of sorts. The Flaken is super street bike style. It's very fast, very flattering, but it never just settles in very well. Uh, the ergonomics are super comfortable for lap after lap of use. Uh, the brakes are the biggest difference between a proper track bike and a normal street bike like this. You definitely would want to put on an RCS 19 or upgrade this if you're thinking about seriously using your V2 for track duty instead of just kind of 
you know, dabbling a little bit here and there. The quick shifter doesn't give you the gears down that you would like. It's the same story as a Daytona 765. It's not tactile and immediate. It kind of lets you put down a gear when it thinks you should. So you have to be quite low on the revs, relatively in my opinion, to be able to actually select a gear down. So that's not great. Uh, the rev ceiling is quite low. This is typical for a Ducati twin cylinder, but because of that, you're going to have to be changing your gears much more than you would on a normal super sport motorcycle. So just keep that in mind. And because this thing's not set up with GP shift, while you're leaned over, you have to hook your foot around and select up a gear. It's not ideal. So overall, I would say the recommended changes for this would be more aggressive rubber. Uh, these Rosso 2s are okay, but they could definitely be uh, geometry adjustment for a bit slower turn in. It's a little twitchy on initial flicking. It's not something I prefer. I know some people like to ride like that. That's not my style. So that's something I would change, but definitely as you pick up the pace and get more used to something like this, you'd want to see if that's something that suits your style. I would definitely put an exhaust on it. I think the MV kind of has it beats and it has that SC project. This thing has a stock exhaust system. It still sounds pretty good for what it is, but you want to hear that big twin bark. And uh, I would say get that RCS19 on there so you have more pressure and more engagement from the levers. So you really can stop this motorcycle in time. Uh, I would disable the quick shifter down and I would put GP shift on it. So now let's get these two bikes back together and talk about who should get what and why. So overall, both these motorcycles are really, really fun on track. I think they both provide a very unique Italian bespoke, you know, biscotti experience, but they both go about it in very, very different ways. So the MV Agusta is a crazy limited edition track factory motorcycle. You just don't find that many of them nowadays. It is the real deal and it's stupid fun to ride. Um, it's abhorrent as a street motorcycle. So honestly, you would only get the MV if you literally just want a track bike. I think riding this on the street is an exercise in sadomasochism, it sucks. Um, and it makes it a little bit one dimensional, but if you like exclusivity, honestly, I had so many people come up to me while I had this MV Agusta and they're just like giving me thumbs up. I had several people as I was going on track, just going like this and just giving like a little chef's kiss to it. It's a very fun motorcycle to own. Lots of people want to talk to you about it and ask about it. It's all it's limited edition, you know? And it's also a motorcycle that requires basically no setup to get out and enjoy a very capable track motorcycle. So if that's your bag, the MV is the bike to get. However, the V2 is much less exotic. It feels like a well-mannered motorcycle that's probably like 15% uncomfortable being pushed on the track. The bike's happily gonna do laps at about an 8 tenths pace. You do not wanna start approaching nine or 10 tenths with this motorcycle. It just really starts putting itself into knots and getting out of sorts. I didn't really like it when I started really pushing on it. And that's just down to the fact that the geometry is very street bike oriented. Everything on it is very street bike oriented. So most street motorcycles tend to start getting out of sorts when you really push on them. It's going to happily give you a track day experience though. And that's kind of what Ducati customers want in my opinion. So this is for the occasional track day guy who just really loves a Ducati, wants a Panigale, doesn't want a V4 because let's be honest, those are kind of ridiculous. And they still want that classic twins cylinder Ducati thing. This is the bike I would get if I wanted to go to my local restaurants or bars or coffee shops and just pull up with a very fancy looking cool Ducati. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Why don't you click this one right over here and you can keep watching some more of your sweet Papa Yam. Maybe this one will have fun memes in it. Maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe I crash a motorcycle. Who can say? Maybe you should click and find out.